Ride on, King Jesus. No man cannot hinder me. Ride on, King Jesus. No man cannot hinder me. King Jesus rides on a milk white horse. No man cannot hinder me. The river of Jordan he did cross. No man cannot hinder me. Ride on, King Jesus. No man cannot hinder me. Ride on, King Jesus. No man cannot hinder me. Women deserve to be hipped into courages and lifted over mud puddles and given the best of everything. Well, nobody ever hit me into a courage or carried me over any mud puddle or give me the best of anything and ain't I a woman? Hello, my name is Jerry Feinstein. I'm with the 1st Michigan Engineers. I represent a Union Infantryman. Uh, as you can see, my compadre here is in gray, representing a Confederate infantryman. Uh, what happens is, although we are similar in uniform, our political ideas were different. Uh, as I went ahead, I became a recruiting officer. I would go from town to town and try and get youngsters and anybody that would join the Army for a bonus money and help send them to a camp of instruction where at this camp we would learn and teach you how to fire guns, how to use your various different types of uniforms and prepare yourself for the battle that was going to come. I'm almost ready to fire my musket because this is a muzzle loader which needs a firing cap to fire. I would then get the order to Ready, aim, and fire. Now as Jerry said, the men on both sides lived very similar lives. Many of them died before they ever reached the battlefield. They died of sickness and disease, bad water, bad food. They were dying all over the place before they fought, saw their very first enemy, before they fired their first shot. But let's say you finally get through that and you get to your first battlefield. You get down there, you march into the field, you see the enemy across the field for the first time. You lower your musket, you fire, they fire. Thousands of rounds begin flying back and forth. Men are dying all around you. Maybe these men were people that you grew up with, your cousins, your brothers. Maybe as many as 20% of your company would die in their very first battle. And you have four more years of this war to go. Imagine the carnage and death these men saw. My name's Eliza Burns. A Civil War musician extraordinaire. Guaranteed to give the kids in your classroom a good time and raise a ruckus while they learn. I wish I was in the land of cotton. Old times there, but not forgotten. Look away, look away, look away. Dixieland, in Dixieland, where I was born. Early on, one frost morning. Look away, look away, look away. Dixieland, I wish I was in Dixie. Hooray, hooray.
president of a group called Taylor's Battery. I serve as the captain of the group. Uh, we have in front of our one of our guns is our uh, six-pounder, uh, one of the mainstays early part of the Civil War. My name is Harriet Tubman. I grew up like a neglected weed. Ignorant of liberty, having no experience of it, and every time I seen a white man, I was afraid of being carried away. I think slavery is the next thing to hell. Well, if a person would be bad enough to send another into bondage, he would. It appeared to me be bad enough to send him to hell if he could. Now, I had reasoned this out in my mind. There was one or two things I would have. Liberty or death. And if I couldn't have one, I would certainly have the other. For no man shall take me alive. I would fight for my liberty as long as my strength lasted. And when the time came for me to go, I would let the Lord The shots fired at Fort Sumner in Charleston, South Carolina have triggered this great conflict to restore our union. And now, the fall of 1862, the wounded and dying are flooding our cities. The Union Army is desperately short of doctors and nurses. Leading the cause to relieve our federal government of this great burden, Dorothea Dix, appointed by the Secretary of War, has responded with her leadership in her recruitment of women from across the North to come to the aid of our fallen brothers as nurses in the military hospitals. I, along with thousands of other women, have volunteered to answer this call and signed on for three months of service in the Union Army's Female Nursing Corps. In my duties, I will administer medical care, clean and feed our soldiers, and most importantly, show them the motherly care we would show to our own sons. I am proud to have this great honor. Doc, Sarge sent me up to get some Oh, it's you, Stillwell. Well, you get yourself out. You didn't come up here for no medicine, Stillwell. Don't give me that line. You're a shirker. Go on back to where you belong. No, don't stay around here. I'll put you on report. Or force it. Oh, ladies, I didn't see you standing there. Allow me to introduce myself to you. My name is Dr. Jonathan Sean Patrick Migone. I'm the regimental surgeon of the 104th Illinois Volunteer Infantry. And as you can see by my rank, I'm a major. Oh, I see puzzlement on your face. You're probably wondering how an Irishman like myself got to be so high ranking in this army. Well, that's a long story, I can tell you that. But well, before we go into that kind of thing, and before I take you on a tour of my surgery, perhaps we could sit down and have a cup of tea and talk a little bit about the things back home. <laughs>